Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I got another how-to video for you. Today we're going to update the Edge TX firmware of the Jumper T20 as well as the Express LRS firmware. As always, I'm Jeff with Titan FPV. Let's dive in. First of all, business guys, if you're not yet subscribed, please do so. Click that notification bell and you'll be notified when I upload all new content to the channel. Today we're going to update the Jumper T20. This is the first Edge TX update. This radio is officially supported. The version that shipped with the radio is Jumper's own forked version. So let's see what version we're running. Welcome to Edge TX. Switch warning. All right, so we're going to hold the system button and then we'll page over to see. All right, so we're running, looks like the version to factory. I don't know. So this is a, a forked version that Jumper has put out. Now that we know what version we are on, let's get started. Let's head over to the Edge TX website. Okay, and we're gonna hit the Get Edge TX button. All right, there's a couple different ways to install Edge TX or update. We can use the Edge TX Buddy, and then there's a direct download. You do have SD card content, so you want to make sure it's compatible with the version of Edge TX. Uh, this is a major update, so I believe the existing SD card contents should be just fine. Uh, but I'll verify that before we uh, complete the process. Jeff from the future, the existing SD card contents are compatible. Uh, but if you do want uh, a video on how to update the SD card contents, perhaps I can do one in the future. If you do update the SD card contents, you will have to recalibrate the gimbals. In this video, we're going to update via the bootloader method on the radio itself. The uh, Jumper T20 has an internal ROM. I believe it's 512 megabytes, if I'm not mistaken. So you would just have to uh, connect the radio, mount it, the SD card, and then you could drag the firmware update over. All right, now that we've got that downloaded, This is going to be the firmware for every radio. So uh, there's a couple different versions now. I have the just the Jumper T20, the V1 version. Firmware Ben's going to be the correct one. Now, if you have a V2, the process should be similar, but you'll want to flash the appropriate radio. But you're going to want to look at your radio. You can pretty much tell by the casing on the radio. I'll, I'll post pictures here on the screen. Uh, you can determine you know which version your radio is, but you want to flash the appropriate version. So now that we have that downloaded, we just have to connect our radio. Once we have the SD storage mounted, we can take our bin file, copy it. Mine's called disk image. You can go into the firmware folder and paste that bin file. All right, once that's done, we can head back to the radio and disconnect it. All right, to get into bootloader mode, you're going to make sure that your radio is powered off. We're going to hold these trims in towards the center together, and we'll hold down the power button. All right, as you see, we're in bootloader mode, and we have our firmware that we can flash. So we could either uh, connect this to a computer and flash or we could flash directly uh, on if we have the firmware on the SD card so that way is the easiest uh, everybody's going to have a different computer be it a Mac or PC so the, the way I'm going to show you how to do it today is going to be through the radio itself so we're going to select that with the uh, click wheel and then we will select the firmware and then we'll hold the click wheel. All 
All right. And it looks like the update was complete. And we can just exit. Welcome to HTX. And look, you see we have a new boot logo. So I would say that the firmware is updated successfully, but let's dive into the settings just to confirm that. We'll long press the system key again, and then we're gonna page over. And as you see, we're running the current version, which is 2.10.5. So this is an official release. We've got that step of the process updated. Now we just need to head on to update the ExpressLRS version. Let's check to see what version of ExpressLRS we're running. We can page back over to the Lewis script, select the ExpressLRS Lewis script, and we should be able to find what version we're running. All right, so it looks like we're running 3.3.1. Now for ExpressLRS, depending on what uh, your quad or your receiver is running, you want to be on the same major version. So only update this if you're running, if you're going to be updating to a major version. So we're running 3.3. .3. I believe the, the latest is 3.5.1, but we'll check on the website. So 3.0 and later is going to be compatible with this version. Now let's open the Express LRS configurator. You do want to make sure that you're running the current version. I'm running version 1.7.6 as the time of this video. You're going to select the latest version, or I am in this case. So that's 3.5.1. Now, as I went over earlier, you do want to make sure that on your receiver, on your quad, uh, and the transmitter, you're running the same major version. So say your receiver is running 3.3, .3, you know, you'd be safe to use that with 3.5.1, 3.0, 3.5.1. But if you're using version 2 or 1, you know, you're not going to be able to bind your uh, quad correctly to your transmitter. So, or you may have issues and it just may be unstable. So definitely don't do that. In theory, you want to have all of the devices updated to the same firmware, but the same major version is also okay. In this case, we're going to select our device, which is uh, Jumper 2.4. Now they have two versions of this radio, well, two versions of the original radio, uh, 900 megahertz, but you want to make sure you flash the correct one. Mine is the 2.4 gig version. And then you're going to select the actual device, which in this case is the Jumper T20 2.4. Now there is a V2 version of that radio, but I have the V1. Uh, I'll leave these essentially as is. Um, I've had problems, as I stated earlier, uh, flashing over Wi-Fi with my Mac since I've run a Sequoia. I don't know if I need to be more patient. If you know a solution to flash over Wi-Fi with a Mac, let me know, but I've had some issues there. And we're going to be flashing this through the HTX pass-through. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to connect your radio via USB to your computer, and then you're going to select USB serial. Once you've got that selected, you should be able to flash it. Um, so here you see the OpenTX, which is the same as EdgeTX, essentially. On a Mac, it's typically recognized. If you connect to a quad in uh, Betaflight, you're going to see this TTY USB modem. That's essentially going to be the same thing. And then you're just going to flash. We'll probably erase before flash. Let's do that. All right. It's going to build, then flash the transmitter. All 
All right, so it looks like it was successful. We just want to verify that, and we'll be good to go. All right, let's verify our version and verify that it connects to our quad. Enter the Lua script, and we'll scroll down. And as we see, 3.5.1. One final test. Hey, look, this guy's coming to the channel soon. Always want to power your transmitter up before you power your quad with Express OLRS. I think that's the case in any protocol. And, and as you see, we do have a few bars of telemetry. Let's make sure the quad arms. All right, looks like we've successfully updated our transmitter as well as our internal Express LRS module. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Stay tuned. I got a lot of new stuff coming to the channel, including this new HD0 Tiny Whoop. As always, guys, thanks for watching. And we'll catch you in the next one. Previously, this was running a fork of HTX that uh, Jumper had forked off. Uh, forked off?